My name is Matthew Allen. I'm with Atlantic Pollination Limited uh, and this is my colleague Robin Dean from Red Beehive Company. Uh, we are based in England. We've been working on the Posh Bee project for a number of years uh, and our particular responsibility is to deliver semi-field studies on honeybees. Uh, we also liaise with our colleagues in Germany who are doing similar work on bumblebees and our colleagues in Switzerland who are working with solitary bees, Osmia bees. Our responsibility is to uh, create semi-field studies which means we have to build enclosures. You can see in the background um, one of our enclosures. Inside the enclosures we grow certain crops and we apply the, the, the stressors, the pressures that, uh, that, that we're wanting to study to see what impact they have. Uh, in this case what we've done is we've uh, grown some uh, enclosures with phacelia and some enclosures with buckwheat so we can uh, examine the impact of, um, the, of, of the nutrition that the bees are getting. Uh, the, the, the principle of this is based on the notion that when we put bees into an enclosure uh, there is sufficient food in there to keep the bees going. Mm -hmm. Now uh, these cages on, on this site are 72 square meters. There's a limit to how much food that can be produced in 72 square meters. Clearly if you put in a full-size honeybee colony uh, you've got a big problem in that uh, there, is, there is not enough food. So what we've worked hard at achieving over these years is a system that matches the food demand of the bees uh, with the food supply inside the enclosures. Now, uh, what we have done is we've worked hard to design and manufacture uh, a whole set of specialist equipment that's designed very much focused on this job and so we're looking at being able to create small colonies and sustain small colonies and uh, res do research with those small colonies. Uh, the starting point that we have here is that we use a small hive which is this one. This is called the Mini Plus Beute and it's a German hive. It's, uh, it's quite small you can see this, the size of the frame. Uh, it holds six frames in each box. Um, it's made of uh, foam polystyrene, so it's uh, very good insulation. We've been running bees in these, these kind of hives for many years and the, the, the bees thrive in these type of conditions. Uh, before I hand over to Robin, uh, I'm just going to mention a couple of the um, couple of the items that we've we've created just to make our job easy. And I'm going to start with this one. This is what we call the food frame, and uh, in here we can drop a kilogram of fondant. A skewer goes into them, in, into that block of fondant, and then that goes into the hive, which makes feeding of these colonies very quick and very easy. And, uh, in order to, to simply to manage the colonies we, uh, around a number of apiary sites and to make sure we've got the right kit in the right place at the right time, uh, we've created this which is um, it's a carrier and into that we can load any of our frames. We have stacks of these sitting in our, in our warehouse um, with various kinds of frames, they are just ready to be picked up. Now, I'd like to hand over to Robin, who's going to talk about the, the key features of this system, and in particular, the most important part of it. Right, thanks, Matt. Well, the heart of the research system is this, which we call the study frame. Um, and as you can see, we have a solid plastic foundation in the center and each frame is laser etched with the serial number. So we have the serial number with an A for the one side and with a B for the other. So we know exactly which side we are photographing. 
<coughs> so the way it works is we get the bees to draw these frames out. In actual fact, they're quite happy to draw plastic foundation, even in these small frames. It is, it is coated with beeswax. It is coated with beeswax, I, I must add. Um, but we, we tend to use a bigger colony to do a lot of the hard work simply because the small colonies just don't have the energy to, to produce enough heat to, to do the wax pulling. But once we have a frame drawn, um, a couple of days prior to the study, on day minus two, we put the queen onto that frame and we lock her in with a queen excluder that just literally clips on with magnets and that can then go into the box um, and the queen will then lay will lay up several hundred eggs, we hope, um, which we then allow to, to hatch. So the day of exposure is generally the day of, of the eggs going from, from egg to larvae, uh, which means that any chemical impacts are usually immediately obvious. We then track that frame all the way through the study, uh, and because of the serial number, we know that we are looking at the same frame um, our client would know that, that we're looking at the same frame, we're not dodging the data, uh, we've got it accurate, it's all spot on, and the camera doesn't lie, at least not unless you use Photoshop. Let's just quickly talk about how we actually get to creating a mini Boyton colony. So what we, what we do, what we have, is this, in the field would be a standard polystyrene nucleus box. So it is a UK standard six frame box. Could taking we, could we um, show the comparison between the sizes of the frames? Sure. So if we look at the, the two frames side by side see the mini boy is about half the size so what that means is with the with the national box we can actually put a really nice in effect engine the heart of the hive is this really big box of bees um, depending on on what we want to do we either have a queen in the bottom of the box, a queen excluder, and then the super in effect, loaded with frames. Oh, there we go. So you can see there. And then what we do as we get closer to the study, we take the box apart again, lift up the queen excluder, find the queen and move her from the bottom box. Well, we, we have her captured, we put the queen excluder back on, we reassemble the box and we introduce her into the top. So she then starts to lay brood in the top section. And what this means is that when we take these frames and move them into the mini boiter box, there is no effort required by the bees to make a working colony. Effectively, the, the, the work has all been done by the large colony. It's very easy to take a big colony and make it small. It's very difficult to get a small colony um, to do all the, all the work that we need. And in the mini boiter box, effectively, once we've miniaturized the colony, it performs exactly like a large colony. And in fact, they start to expand out of those boxes quite quickly, uh, given the right conditions. So we need to manage them really carefully. <clears throat> so if we can just show you on our live colony. Right, so here we have a live colony, which has been fitted with our dead bee trap. Um, as you can see, we have this drawer that you can remove a uh, number of bees that have, that have uh, been dragged out by the undertakers. And then here we have the entrance block and these entrance blocks are quite special in that they're made 
with two sides. So this, the, the side that it's positioned at the moment is just a straight in and out entrance. And if you flip it over, you can see the pollen stripping grid in there. And then to utilize it, we just load a little pollen collection drawer in like that. And then just drop it straight back in front of the hive. Sorry, ladies. And to give you an indication of how efficient they are, this is a pollen trap, a pollen drawer with 24 hours or collection over a 24 hour period. So considering it's a tiny colony, they actually work very, very well. Yeah, so one other little feature of, of the um, setup that we have is the ability to use a, a sheet of Corex uh, fluted plastic board. Uh, we consider them to be disposable, but we use that as a, a Varroa monitoring um, setup. Uh, we do that several times during the course of a trial uh, so that we can keep, can keep tabs on, on what's happening within the colonies. Um, but it's it's a very slick system it works well and um, we find we get really good results with this to give you an idea of how easy it is to work with these little boxes Queen excluder off. And in this box you'll see two study frames, which is normal. Right, so we just pull the uh, study frame out. And in use we always just demarcate which side we, we're using. Uh, we have it recorded somewhere, but just for ease of use and speed, we just usually put a little marker on either a drawing pin or a little paint chevron as we have on that side. Uh, we just gently brush the bees off. And as you may have noticed, they don't usually enjoy this. It can get interesting. And then I'm going to hand this frame over to Matt. Uh, who's going to just give us a quick demo on the camera equipment. Thank you, Robin. Uh, now, this is the kind of frame that I like to see. Uh, what we're looking for here is impact on the eggs and the larvae. Uh, and we follow a particular document called OECD Guidance Document 75 that um, tells us how to how to take the photos, at what stages to take the photos, and how to interpret the photos. Um, we're fortunate in that we can use image recognition software that can automatically recognize the contents of thousands and thousands of cells and relate them so we can follow, we could pick any individual on this frame and follow it all the way through its life until it emerges as an adult. Now if I show you the other side of the frame You'll see that we also have good, um, good laying there. Uh, but the next thing to do is, uh, is not to keep it out in the open air, but to get it in the camera, get the photos, get the photos archived, and get the frame back into the hive as soon as possible. Uh, the equipment I'm using here has been uh, specially designed just for this job. Uh, and it comprises a single lens reflex camera here, then this cabinet, and at this level here we have a set of four flood lamps fitted with diffusers. Uh, it's very important that the illumination of frames um, is done properly because it's very easy to lose, uh, lose the image of an egg or a very young larva against the background of the comb. Uh, that's the reason that we use a black 
plastic foundation here because we find that the eggs and young larvae show up very clearly. The, the, the contrast is very good. Now what I do here is um, we have a frame holder at the bottom of the cabinet here that opens like that. The frame, frame holder is set a particular distance and it holds the, the frames at a certain angle because you have to try and make sure that you can, your, your camera is looking straight into the cells. Now, as you know, the cells are sloping, so we have to compensate for that. Uh, this frame holder just clips up. Now we've got everything in location. We've got the frame in the right place at the right angle. We've got the lamps in the right place. We've got the diffusers in place. Uh, the camera settings are all preset uh, so that Essentially, every photograph that we take of frames in the system, uh, they're all taken under the same circumstances. They're not, um, not uh, uh, modified by daylight getting in down the tube or working at midnight. One click, that's it. So we use the, the remote control to avoid putting any shake on the camera at all. Uh, having done that, the frame comes out and back into the hive. On the camera, on the memory card now of the camera, we have all of the photos of all of the frames, uh, every one we've taken. And our next job is to interpret that information. It's high quality data and there's lots of it. Uh, we've worked hard to make it integrated. The pieces are all designed, manufactured to fit together quickly and easily and to work well together. And they have to be really simple. Yeah, yeah. And we're very happy with the results. That's not to say it's perfect. We can mm -hmm. always improve things. Um, but as I say, we're both very happy with the results so far. We're always happy to talk to colleagues fellow bee researchers because this is important work that we've been allowed to participate in and uh, very glad to have had the opportunity. Yep, and I'll second that.